Hey everyone, it's Lisa and welcome to episode 10 of the Stop, Drop and Knit podcast. I am coming to you from Long Island, New York, and this is a podcast about knitting and spinning and any other fiber related crafting activity. If you would like to follow me on the internet, you can find me on Ravelry at Lisa Jack. 78 that's lisa j a k 78 and on instagram i am lisa westervelt flute studio so i will put that information on the screen right here and everything i talk about today will be listed for your reference in the description box below this video so how have all of you guys been it has been an exciting week we have not only reached 500 subscribers on this channel, but we are about to hit 600. So I am, I am so excited about that. And you know what that means is that this is officially a 500 subscriber giveaway episode. So I have a very exciting giveaway that I will talk about later on. So be sure to stay tuned to find out how you can enter the giveaway. Okay, so first things first, let's talk about what I am wearing today. This is a sweater that I chose to wear today because it goes hand in hand with the knit along that I just started for 2021, which you can find by joining my Ravelry group. Um, my Ravelry group is Stop, Drop and Knit Podcast. And I have two knit alongs and spin alongs going on in that thread in that group um so the there's a hundred days of spinning spin along which i will mention later and then we have a knit along for stop drop and knit that stash stop drop and knit your stash something like that stop drop and knit your stash basically knit your stash we all have a lot of stash and um yeah, it's it's really exciting sometimes to just find a pattern that you're interested in knitting and then dig through your stash and see what yarns you can go through to put them together to maybe create that, that special sweater. And so that is exactly what I did with this sweater that I am wearing today. And I will insert some pictures so that you can get a full view. Um, but this is the Vitridge vitrage vitridge i have no idea how to say it i will put that on the screen for you basically i'm just going to put everything on the screen um so yeah this is a test knit that i did for annie lupton of boho chic fiber co i have tested several sweaters for her over the past couple of years and i will be doing another test knit for her after i finish my current test knit um, so there will be more from Annie coming to this podcast, but this is like a, a, a kind of stand up so you can just see it's kind of a cropped ish on me. I, I made it a little bit cropped, um, swancho type sweater. So, um, yeah, I wanted to show you guys how I came up with all of this from what I already had in my stash. The main color, this, this brown, that is the main body, was leftovers that I had from the Easley sweater, which was the very first test knit. I'm trying to figure out which is the back and which is the front, All right? They're kind of the same. So I already showed this off on, I think it was maybe episode three. Um, one of those, one of those early episodes, I was wearing this sweater and talked to you guys about it. So this was a test knit that I did also for Annie of Boho Chic Fiber Co. And this is the Easley sweater and I'll hold it up close um, so you can get an idea of that um, crisscross cable pattern. And then at the bottom in the ribbing, there's that really um, interesting cabling detail as well and I just love how the ribbing is like a little bit of a chevron shape there. So um, this was yarn 
that I bought on a trip a few summers ago when I visited Chincoteague Island and in um, Virginia. And I just now, I've used this in several sweaters because I had bought like, I think 2,500 yards of it and it's a fingering weight yarn. Um, and so this is what it looks like. It's like a tonal brown. This color is called Tugboat. And this was um, from Carradine Farm, which is where the, the yarn shop, the name of the yarn shop on Chincoteague Island. She um, occasionally hand dyes her own yarn. And so this was one of the colors in her hand dyed yarn. And so I picked this up as a souvenir from that trip. Um, so I was able to knit the entire Easley sweater and I still had so much yarn left over. Um, so when, when I agreed to do this test knit for Annie, I said, all right, like what, what yarn am I gonna have that I could potentially use as the main color because that always requires the most yardage. So I had first decided on this one because I just, of the quantity that I had was enough for me to have enough for the main body yardage. So then basically I just, I dug through my stash to just find color combinations that would work. And so I picked through like a whole bunch of my sock yarn because sock yarn is fingering weight. And so this one is, um, it's a super wash merino, but this has no nylon in it. So this was not like officially a sock yarn, um, but the rest of these are. And so um, I was able to find all of these in my stash. And so I'm gonna tell you what they all are. So I just kind of lined up I wound them up and I lined up the skeins together. And I said, you know what? I think that that would work really, really nicely for this sweater. Um, and I just, I just happened to have colors, like I love brown and pink together. And then this yarn also had pink with specks of brown and a golden yellow. And so that kind of tied these two together. And then for the background, I had a very light colored sock yarn that is a little hard to focus on, but there's some colorful specks in there. So it was really fun to dig through everything. And I'm just gonna um, tell you, I dropped the label for this one. I'm just gonna tell you what each of them are. All of this information, um, about the yarn that I use for this sweater can be found on my Ravelry page, project page for the Vitridge, Vitridge, whatever, whatever it's called, sweater. Um, so this one here is Madeline Tosh Sock. Yeah, it's Tosh Sock, and the colorway of this one is Salt. 388 is the number. So and then it says PS17. So I think it's from like 2017 colorway, potentially. Um, so that's what this is. All of these are completely different yarns. Like none of these are even from the same company or anything. So it was really just kind of putting, putting whatever I had together to create this, which turned out so beautifully. Um, and so then this one, beautiful sock yarn it was something that I picked up from a small business at um, the Long Island Fiber Fair and it is by a little small business she is Pine and Sparrow Fiber Co and the colorway so this is her high twist sock base and this colorway is called Solar Flare so I picked these up, I want to say in 2018. So I don't know if this colorway would still be available or not. This is the only yarn that I have purchased of Pine and Sparrow. So I just don't know. You guys could look and she may or may not have the recipe for it still. Um, Solar Flare, this was a color that she helped me pick out because I was just trying to get away from my habit of always picking purple. This is part of my project is to step outside of my purple comfort zone. So that was that one. And then 
I don't have the labels, so I know that I have the information for this pink one um, on my project page. But this beautiful tonal pink actually is an alpaca blend and it is it has nylon in it so it is meant to be um, strong enough to use as socks and this was also a souvenir yarn from an alpaca farm Sweetbrook Sweetbrook farm in Massachusetts yeah it's got it's got alpaca but it's a beautiful tonal pink and so I've got this much left over still and so I do want to combine some of these actually actually what I want to do is combine these now to make a pair of socks to coordinate with this sweater that's kind of my plan I have plenty plenty of yarn to make it happen so this is going to be a sock project so that I have matching socks because that'll be really cool so um so that's what I'm wearing today. The The other reason that I selected this sweater, well, two reasons, is because I really don't have that much actual active knitting to share with you guys today because I am just crazy monogamously knitting on my test knit. Um, but that's the other reason I chose this sweater because this is one that used three color color work, which is what I am dealing with with the test knit that I am knitting right now. And so I just wanted to point out, I'll come a little bit, a little bit closer here. Um, so all of these sections here that have like the cream and the pink and the brown. So this is a three color area. Um, at the top here, it's just two colors, but as soon as you get down, adding the cream in over here, it's three colors because you've got the cream and then the dark brown and then the yellowy pink color. Um, and then down here as well, there's, um, let me see if I can get that a little bit closer for you guys to see. So there's like a little plus signs with the speckly background behind there. So those are also, all of, all of the plus sign areas are three color rows and then down here we get back to just two colors again so this was my very first i think i i think last time i said that this was the only other three color sweater i've done but i found one other one also a test knit that i did for annie so i've done a lot for annie test knitting um yeah because she does a lot of color work stuff that i think is really fun so yeah, so I actually have two projects that used two colors and actually the other one that I'm thinking about had a few rows that used four colors and that was a little bit crazy, but thankfully it was only a few rows here and there. So yeah, so I just, I thought that this would be a good sweater to wear today to help tie different segments of my episode together a little bit between the Knit Your Stash Knit Along that I have started, which is going to last for all of 2021. So you can use your um, knitting stash, you can use your fiber stash, anything that is stashed prior to 2021 completely counts. And actually... Even if you bought it in early 2021, like earlier this month, if you didn't buy it with a specific project in mind, I think it should count because basically it's only stash if you're not actively knitting on it and if you buy it with like no specific purpose and don't knit it like immediately, I think, right? So yeah, so basically anything that you've got that is not for a plan, that is not a new purchase, for a planned project can count for this knit your stash along thread that we're gonna do and I think that that's gonna be super fun I mean this has actually turned out to be one of my favorite sweaters that I have knit um, just the colors go together so beautifully the patterning that that Annie came up with is just it's very striking and it's just, it's really lightweight because it's fingering weight. So I just, I have a t-shirt on underneath and it's just a really easy, comfortable sweater to just, 
to just throw on and I, I actually wear this one a lot and I just used things that I already had to make it happen which just makes me really proud of it even more because I I agreed to do a test knit and then actually shopped from myself to make it happen to turn it into a reality so I mean the possibilities in your own stash might really surprise you and sometimes it's hard to pick through your stash without a specific pattern in mind so next time you find a pattern that uses multiple colors um try just digging through and even if you can come up with like 75 percent or 50 percent of a sweater with your stash then you're you know you're you're helping to save some money by you know using part of what you already have and then just kind of supplementing for the rest of it so that's another way that you can do it too like if you have two colors that work really beautifully together but but then can't quite find another color that works really well then maybe you're going to shop for just one skein of something instead of a whole sweater quantity um i will insert my little disclaimer here that I am very supportive of continuing to support your local yarn shop and shop with them. They do need all the help that we can give them right now. Um, so if you have the means to go spend some money at your local yarn shop, please do. I will be throughout the year um, periodically, but um, I'm just hoping to also knit my way through a lot of what I have accumulated already because I have accumulated a bunch of really really beautiful yarn so I think that that is all that I have for what I am wearing I do not have any finished objects this week because as I said I am exclusively working on my test knit so we're gonna just go on to the whips section I did get a little bit done, actually just yesterday, of my vanilla is the new black sock. So, um, and that's gonna tie everything really nicely together too with the giveaway that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. So last time I showed you my sock in progress and I had this much of it done. And then Owen had his theater yesterday. He um. So they just started a new theater segment for the winter months. And so yesterday he had his audition and they are doing Winnie the Pooh kids this time. And they're doing it um, with masks and very, very small. I think there's, there's seven kids in his group. So it's a very, very small production and they're been really great about the kids are kept apart from each other and everything. So, so far it's working out really well um and then they record and we're not allowed to go see the shows in person which is pretty sad because it's his first experience in theater and my first and only child so just kind of experiencing these firsts for him and for us me as a theater mom in a different way than planned but it has still been the best it has been so fun so anyway so yesterday he had his audition and he got cast as winnie the pooh so we are so excited for him um yeah he he really wanted Pooh. so this you know so this time he's got it and he knows that he's not always gonna get the leading role he had a pit pretty big role as linus in the charlie brown show as well so so far he's kind of having the experience of having a lot of of responsibility as a singer and with lines um as a little actor but you know we went into this explaining to him that one show you might have a really big role and then in the next show you might have just a really small part and that everything is important to contributing to the whole of the performance so um but he's still really excited because he got Pooh Bear, which, yeah, it's just, it's just going to be pretty adorable. Anyway, so while he was in theater yesterday, I needed a project. His theater rehearsals, 
I have to stay in the car and they are right when the evening is turning dark. So I just have like my little light in the car and I park under a little street lamp. So my lighting is very limited. So I like to bring with me a project that is very mindless and not too dark. So I did not bring my worsted boxy. I'm not even gonna show you guys my worsted boxy today because really maybe knit like four rounds and it just doesn't really look any different from last time. I think I'm about two inches from splitting for my sleeves on that. Um, but the yarn, if you remember, the Malabrigo Rios I'm using for that is very, very dark. And so I, I didn't want to bring that one with me. So I grabbed the sock and I decided that I could use the chart on my phone. And so I worked on the heel. And so this is the vanilla is the new black sock pattern by Anna Fletcher. And the cool thing about this pattern is it's basically a vanilla sock but then instead of doing a traditional um, heel flap and gusset or a short row heel or a fish lips kiss heel or an afterthought heel or any of those types of heels she created the heel with knit and pearl ribbing at like a diagonal for like a heel shape with increases and so basically like there's a chart and you start incorporating it at the top and you increase out and then you do a heel turn and now there's no gusset so all I all you do is that little chart and then you do the heel turn and now I'm just gonna uh, knit just around and around and around and around and around for the foot until I get to the toe um, and then the sock is done and it's it's just a really fun pattern that is just a little bit of a different way of of doing things than just the heel flap and gusset that I always do because it's like the one that just fits me the best so far that I found um and then I'm gonna do the toe in this same yarn up here so the yarn that I am using is Julia Vesper from Knitterly Things. And this is her Naughty and Nice colorway. That was one of her Christmas colorways from 2020. And this was a Christmas cast on for me. I didn't get the yarn in time to have them ready for Christmas. So I instead did a Christmas cast on. And then it came with that mini. So those are just so beautiful together. So this is a little bit different from the yarn that, that Julia usually does. This is more of a, it's not really self-striping. It's a little bit more variegated. It's kind of in between a self-striping and a variegated. Um, so it's like there's kind of like little stripes, but usually Julia's yarn is much thicker, much thicker stripes, self-striping yarn. So that is my whip. Um, that's the only thing other than my test knit that I have to show you guys for today. You guys, I have made some serious progress on this thing. And all of my prayers have been answered because yesterday we received an email from Katherine Clark and she is giving all of us an extra week to complete the sweater. Not because I was so far behind, I mean partially, but I think she kind of reached out to all of us and said, I know it's a slow project. I want to be able to show off as many of your garments as possible when I do release the pattern. Would you guys like an extra week and do the release on January 28th rather than the 21st? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, I've been pushing. I have been pushing and pushing and pushing myself around the clock as much as much as possible to work on this test knit. And I think I would have maybe come close to being able to get it done by the 21st, but I would not have been able to have like it blocked and have nice pictures for her. So basically I am still, I am proceeding 
with the intent to have as much of it done by the 21st as possible still, which is Thursday, which is really quick, really soon. Um, or to have it done, like I really wanna have it done by that Saturday, which would be the 23rd. And then that way I'll have enough time to block it and have it dry and then also take some beautiful photos for her. So let me show you. This is the Noctua-Day sweater. And so I am test knitting this for Katherine Clark and she is at Brooklyn General and you can see how much more I have done now. It is starting to look like a sweater. Look at that. Um, last time I had not yet split for the arms. I think I was still in the middle of the second row of, mo of moths. Um, so I have since split for the sleeves, which has been a lifesaver because just as predicted, my like 420 stitch circumference has shrunk to something like 276 or something like that. So, so many fewer stitches in every round now, which is, it's just really helping me move a lot more quickly. Um, also, when I got through that second set of moths there, we had a big chunk of two color knitting. So that also helped me continue along at a fast pace. And I've slowed down again um, now because I have hit the next section of moths, which I am about halfway through. So, yeah, so it is, it is still a big project. As I said last time, there's also color work on the sleeves, not the full sleeves, but there is a good deal of color work on the sleeves. Um, and there's, it, there's just still a lot, a lot to do. Um, yeah, so um, let me just show you the yarn again, in case you didn't see the last episode. Um, so the yarn that I'm using is for the main color is um, Wisconsin woolen spun fingering weight. And this is from Barrett Wilco from Susan B. Anderson's shop. This is gorgeous. It is rustic. It is 100% American wool. And then I am using Tuku wool fingering for the, um, for the dark color. And then the colored yarn there. Look at that moth right there. Look how pretty that is. Oh my goodness. So the color for the third color is been cycled dyed in the wool and I'm using the Noctuaday colorway, um, which is this one. And I don't think that I'm actually gonna get to all of these um, lighter blue and pink and green colors. The way that this is going right now, I'm just, I'm not really sure how much of it I'm gonna actually dip into, but um, only one skein of the spin cycle was required for this sweater. So I've got, I mean, I'm halfway through the third set of moths and then there's a fourth set plus a little bit on the sleeves. I mean, so maybe, but these are very long color repeats. So I'm just not sure. I don't really know, we'll see. Um, it's really fun though to see just how each of the different moths come out. So let me show you. Um, I've got, whoops, I'm dropping things. Let me stick these back over here. Um, yeah, so this first one just has like a teeny tiny bit. Oops, there we go. A little bit of color in it. But then the second moth has quite a bit more. Um, and then I can't really show you the third moth yet, but there's more. So every set of moths is bigger and the fourth moth is going to be even bigger than the third. So every time you get to like a new set of moths, there's a little bit more of the spin cycle coloring that is used in it. Um, and these moths are what actually really drew me in to this design. I just thought that they were just beautiful. Um, and it had been a really long time since I had knit color work. So yeah, I don't think I did anything color work last year. I mean, I did intarsia, but not 
stranded color work. So stranded color work, it has been a while. So I actually wanted to give you guys a quick shout out and just say thank you to everybody who has commented, um, offering me suggestions on how to better handle this knitting with three colors. Um, I have only a little bit of experience knitting with three colors and last week I I was really panicking because of how how slow it's been going and this um, the looming deadline thankfully I have an extra week so yeah my stress level has immediately it just felt a huge relief a huge weight off my shoulder um, for those that don't know, the reason why I am so stressed is because when I ordered this yarn for the main color at on like December 1st, that is when the um, USPS was experiencing the unprecedented delays. And so my, my main color sweater yarn got held up on in transit for like three weeks instead of the three days that it usually takes to ship priority. So, um, yeah, I, I just was set back beginning this test knit from the timeline that I thought that I had to what it actually ended up being. I wanted to thank everybody who left me a comment with suggestions of different things that I could try to make the three color stranded knitting go a little bit more smoothly. Um, so the first suggestion I had, I don't remember who 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 commented with all the suggestions but I had a few suggestions and one of them is actually working out a little bit better for me and that was to arrange my yarns on the table in front of me a little bit like spaced apart in the order of what I'm knitting so what I had been doing was what? holding like these two on like to the left side of me and then the third color, since I don't use it as frequently, I was holding off to the side, kind of on my right side, and trying to keep them a little bit separate that way because one of the biggest struggles I'm having is with the yarns just getting all twisted together. Um, and then I end up spending more time than I want to just untangling them enough to be able to continue knitting at a fast pace. So with just two colors, it's not a problem. My, my yarns don't tend to get tangled up. But every once in a while, depending on where in the pattern this color has to be inserted, um, sometimes it, it's really good and it stays really separate off in its own little place and there's no tangling that happens. But then every every once in a while there'll be a row that comes along and just the the way that I have to carry it um, and and catch those floats it just ends up all twisting together and then I have to just spend time untangling the mess and ugh, that part is so frustrating um, so what what she suggested that she had seen somewhere was to lay the yarns out like on the table I can't really do this so well. I don't have a table right in front of me, but basically I'm laying them out like in this order <laughs> on the table in front of me, but a little bit spaced apart. And somehow just having the yarn in front of me rather than to my side on the couch is just helping to keep things a little bit less tangled. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm, I'm really the only thing that I've changed is just the placement of the yarn itself. Um, yeah. And then the other suggestion was to buy some of these yarn guides. This suggestion is not yet working out for me. Um, so the idea with, with these yarn guides is that you know, maybe I just haven't found the best way to use them yet. But the idea is that you like wrap them around and you snap it shut and then 
basically you can just stick it in there once, but then you have, like you can see there's no, I should do a video on this sometime once I actually have a chance to play with it more. You can see that there's very, basically no tension there. So then the way to get more tension is to wrap it more time. So wrapping it twice gets just a little bit extra. And then if you want even more tension than that, you can wrap it a third time. And then, you know, so you can do another color on another finger, or I imagine, I mean, the first way that I tried it was to just put a strand of each in the three different slots. And that wasn't working out for me at all because I will show you. Um, so let me just undo this for a second. This is not an official review. Once I play with this more, because right now I don't like it, but I haven't given it that much of a chance. So I wanna actually give it more of a chance and maybe do like a small color work project, really just using these for the whole project, if I can commit to that so that I can really give it a shot. Um, but I just wanna show you like if I, and I don't have this in super correctly because I'm not set up to knit right now. But so I just put them with one strand of each yarn in each of the different slots. But I, so I knit continental and for the way that, that the close, I can't even show you. These are so close together that it was really hard for me to maneuver my needles in between to to pick up the one that I needed. I, I just, I couldn't get just one strand that way. So then I moved on to trying two different ones. I don't have a third for the third color. It was working okay. I mean, it was working okay with two colors, but that's not what I need it for. I need it for three. Um, the biggest problem is that after knitting for a while, with all, all of these stitches that I have on my needles, in order to keep my tension loose enough, I have to be constantly scooting the stitches over on my right needle. And having the yarn like attached to my finger, because usually when I scoot, I don't know if I'm explaining this well, probably not, but usually, when I knit color work, I, and I need to like scooch my stitches down. I just drop my yarn, hold my needles together, scoot them down with my other hand. And then I, I reset everything and I can do that fairly quickly. But with the yarn in the guides, like I couldn't really let it go. And I don't know, it just, it just wasn't working for me. And then also when I had to, I'm reading my pattern, my chart pattern from the phone. And this part happens to go between two different charts. So I, I'm constantly having to just switch between the two charts on my phone screen and it just wasn't working. I didn't have enough like hand free to, to be able to work my phone and slide the stitches down the needles to give myself more space so that my tension wouldn't be way too tight and pucker too much. I don't know, so I'm gonna play with these more, but on another project. Right now is just not a good time for me to, I just don't have extra time since I am on such a tight schedule with this knit to be trying to figure out if this is gonna work. And so then like the other thing that was happening is sometimes my tension when I was using those things got tighter than my normal tension, but then other times it got way looser and it like I was looking at some of the stitches on my needle. I don't, I don't think that I really can find a spot on here to point it out to you but my tension was getting so loose that my, my stitches, I've never seen my stitches that loose before. So my tension was just totally wonky. 
a few stitches would be really tight the next few stitches would be way loose and I just couldn't I just couldn't get it going in a way that I felt comfortable proceeding on this sweater which I have put so much work into so the jury is still out for the yarn guides I will give them a fair shot on a smaller project maybe I do want to do like some color work mittens at some point um, so maybe something that is a little bit smaller scale than this sweater so that is where my test knit stands right now I am very pleased with the amount of progress that I have made and I am also very pleased that I have an extra week very thankful for that <laughs> very very thankful okay so that is all of the knitting that I have to share with you today I do not have a spinning section today because again monogamously knitting on my test knit but um, I do have that hundred days of spinning thread going along as well in my Ravelry group so we are going to be trying to increase our spinning not necessarily a hundred days but at least a hundred days throughout all of 2021 my goal is to knit 300 days I mean to knit that's easy to spin 300 days this year so every four months I am going to draw a winner for some kind of fibery prize out of the people who are participating in the spin along so every four months I'm gonna try to hit a hundred days of spinning so that's my idea with that thread so there's the two threads the stash knit your stash thread and the hundred days of spinning thread over in my stop drop and knit podcast group on Ravelry so you guys can head over there and join that so I think we're gonna move on to acquisitions and I'm gonna tie the giveaway information along in with this section as well because they just kind of go together so all right you guys know because I have mentioned it so many times that I am a longtime subscriber to Julia Vesper's sock of the month club she has two clubs and signups are still open so she opens the signups in January I did mention this last week but um, I think she still has available slots for that so it's not too late to go head over but yesterday I got December's colorway from last year's subscription in the mail and so I have two skeins to show you um, so she's got two clubs there's um, all right so there is the sock yarn club which is like her regular like rainbow self-striping colorway club and so this one is called snow place like home so look at how gorgeous that is those colors are so beautiful they're kind of like jewel tones um yeah really just nice and bright and then she included this deep blue mini skein in to use for like contrasting heels and toes and cuffs if you want um and then the other club that she has been doing she is calling the remix club and this one is really cool because she is taking past colorways that she has done from earlier on in her career and she is re-envisioning them reimagining them and creating new fresh colorways based off of a colorway that she had done in the past so I just love this one I am actually really excited for this one this is called joyous remix and that is this one and I just love how there are some solid yarns some with like the barber pole twist in them and then she has included um, this bright yellow mini to go along with it and this one is called golden yellow mini so you get 400 grams of a sock yarn and then a 20 gram mini to go with it 
And when you sign up, you can elect, like if you just want the sock yarn and don't want the minis, you can do that. It is slightly less expensive. Um, the way that she does her subscriptions as well is that you can either pay upfront for the whole entire year, which I have never done. And the most popular way I imagine is what I do where I, I signed up for the full year, but I signed up to do monthly billing so that I am just paying every month as they come. So that's what I do. So this was my, um, this was my acquisition for this week. Um, and I am going to announce the giveaway before I tell you about my next acquisition. We have reached and surpassed 500 subscribers. I am willing to bet I was so close to 600 before I turned the camera on to film that I am willing to bet that as soon as I check after this video, we will have also hit 600. Thank you guys. Thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and helping me grow. I... I had no idea what to expect when I turned on the camera that first day. That first episode of my podcast, I did completely on a whim. I mean, it's something that I've thought about on and off, but mostly off. I just, I just never thought I would actually start a podcast. I thought just who's going to want to sit there and listen to me talk about my knitting. But I have just been craving having people to connect with that actually do want to hear me talk about it because I mean my husband is very patient with me my son is six and while he is very knit worthy he's really not interested in hearing about my knitting so there, I just don't really have any friends who are in the knitting community or anything so I really just haven't had anybody to just blabber on about knitting too and yarn. And clearly my podcasts are long enough that I just want to blab about my knitting to somebody who will listen. And so like 600 of you are listening to me blab on about my knitting and my yarn. And it is so fun. I, I have just been having the best time. And so I do have a giveaway planned for today. Um, Julia from Knitterly Things has been so kind and has sponsored this giveaway. So Julia has provided for one of you this beautiful skein of self-striping sock yarn along with a 20 gram mini. So this is called Poetry in Motion. There's just all of these beautiful colors in there. And this is a really fun, fun colorway with that hot pink mini if you wanted to do heels and toes. And Julia has also sent along a little project bag. So this is by somebody called Maybe Crafted. It's M-A-Y-B-E-A. So maybe crafted. So I will put her information in there as well. So this is a little project bag for your socks. It's just hand sewn and has a little purple lining in it. Um, I think that she did a really good job pairing the yarn and the bag and the colors together. So Julia has kindly provided those two things. Then I am also contributing a couple of things to this giveaway. Um, in my sock bag, at all times, I keep this little keychain. And this is called um, Anatomy of a Sock. And it is really cool. On this side, it's just like a little fun diagram that breaks down the sock anatomy. And on the other side, it gives you the instructions for Kitchener Stitch. So Kitchener Stitch is not something that I need to look up anymore because I have done it so frequently because I'm almost always having a pair of socks on the needles. But every once in a while, if it's been a couple months, since I have stitched together a toe, I kind of forget. And so this is just a handy little guide 
to Kitchener Stitch. And what's cute about it is it has its own little plastic darning needle. I mean, look, this is not the highest quality darning needle. It's just plastic. But I have had this for several years and it has lasted me this whole time. It has served me well. This is actually the needle I use to darn, not to darn, but to uh, Kitchener stitch my toes for every pair of socks because this is just what I keep in my bag at all times. And so this is a keychain. And then the other thing that I keep right on my keychain so this is mine. I am actually waiting for this to come in the mail. So I don't have this yet, but I will have it for you guys probably sometime this week and I will send it along. The other thing that I keep right on my keychain is this little pair of Haya Haya snips. And so I just have everything right here, a little pair of scissors, my Kitchener stitch reminder, my needle to, do the stitching for the toe and weave in my ends. I just keep this in my bag with my socks. So it's just, it comes with me everywhere. I am never without a, a needle for my ends or a little tiny pair of scissors. These are great too because you can take these on the airplane. They are small enough. Um, yeah, so I am, I have an extra um, little pair of Haya Haya snips. Is this the front of it? Yeah, this is the, um, the puppy dog one. And so I am going to pass this on as well to one of you lucky viewers. All right, to enter the giveaway, what you need to do is you have to subscribe to Stop Dropping It Podcast. So subscribe to my channel give this video a thumbs up and then you have to leave me a comment. And how about for the comment, you tell me your favorite heel that you use for a pair of socks. I think that would be a fun little, little thing. So just comment and tell me what your favorite heel is. Um, if you want to enter the giveaway and you have not yet knit a pair of socks, you're probably not going to have a favorite heel. So that is okay to just say, I don't know. I've never knit socks, but I want to enter it. Whatever. Just, just comment. You have to just leave me a comment, but maybe tell me what kind of, what kind of heel is your favorite. Um, just something, something sock related. I didn't really plan that part out. I meant to, and then I forgot. So yeah, just leave me a comment. Julia has also, in addition to the giveaway, she is providing a coupon code for all of my viewers to use. And that is active right now through the end of the month, so through January 31st, you can save 15% at Julia's shop by entering the code. So I will put the code up on the screen here, and this code will be valid for everything but not the sock, not the sock club subscriptions. So you won't be able to get a discount on the sock club, but like all of her sock yarn that is in her shop and probably like she's got some project bags and, and things like that. So you can go check out knitterlythings.com and get a 15% discount from now through the end of the month. So that is Julia's gift to all of you as a thank you for helping me get my podcast going. Thank you guys so much. This is just a little bit of something that I can do for you. Um, so I think I will leave the giveaway open until the end of the month. So you can only enter the giveaway by commenting on this particular episode. Um, so if you wanna enter the giveaway, make sure it is this episode you are commenting on and not a different one because this is the one that I will be drawing the winner from. I will pick a winner after January 31st. So I think that that is a Sunday. So yeah, so I will announce the giveaway winner either, probably not that day. I'll probably announce the winner the first week in February, like the first Sunday in February to give everybody a chance to enter. So that's the plan. Okay. So the final thing that I have to share with you guys is one more acquisition that I picked up this morning on the way home from the eye doctor. Um, 
I'm really excited about this one and this ties in really well with Julia's yarn as well. So we stopped at the bookstore at Barnes & Noble on the way home from the eye doctor. I had my husband with me because they dilated my eyes and thank goodness because I even it was a dark and cloudy day out there today and I still <laughs> with my sunglasses was like squinting and oh my goodness. Yeah. So, so we stopped at the bookstore and I was so excited because they had this book. So if you guys, most of you have probably seen this come across your Instagram feed and this book is so fun. It is called Knit Happy with Self-Striping Yarn and it says bright, fun, and colorful sweaters and accessories made easy and it is by Stephanie Lotvin. So she is, um, it says, creator of Telly Bean Knits. I think she's Telly Bean Knits on Instagram. I saw this book maybe right at the end of 2020, like that it was going to be out soon. And I said, yes, I must have this book. So what this book is, is a whole bunch of patterns to use your self-striping sock yarn or just self-striping yarn to make projects that are not socks. So I'm gonna read to you just the, the first paragraph of her introduction because it's really funny. So it's not the whole thing. The introduction is like a whole page long. So this is just gonna give you a little hint. It's so, it's just so um, whimsical the way that she wrote it. Okay, so her introduction starts. On May 17th, 2016, I finished knitting the world's coolest socks. In case you're wondering how I could possibly remember that date, keep in mind that it was a big day for my feet. That just made me laugh so hard. Um, for three days, I had been knitting the most beautiful self-striping socks. Propped up on my ottoman, my feet had been watching carefully. My Tootsies had never seen such incredible socks, yellow, red, gray, and blue with speckles and thick stripes and thin stripes, all knit out of merino wool and nylon. Even before my feet had a chance to wear those socks, they did a little dance. When I bound off the last cuff, it was a happy day. I popped my toes into my new favorite socks, skipped down the stairs, put on my shoes, and just like that, my beautiful socks disappeared. They were gone. My poor feet were hidden. Socks and all inside my sneakers. Right then, looking down at my feet, I had an idea that would change the way I use my knitting stash. So that's just the first paragraph of, of her book. And I just thought that that was so funny because it is so true. Um, yeah, we, we knit all of these fun socks and then they just, they do just get hidden in our, in our shoes. It's never actually bothered me in the way that she describes in here. But basically her idea was to create more visible garments to show off this really fun self-striping yarn. I don't know if you guys can see, no, you can't, my, um, Let's move my chair for like one second. So that right there, this whole cabinet right here, this is all Julia's yarn. And that's not my only stash of Julia's self-striping sock yarn. I have, I have a whole other bin on the other side of the room that just has Julia's yarn in it. Not to mention all the other self-striping sock yarn that I have from other companies and just other sock yarn in general that's not striped and rainbow and you get the idea. I have a pretty big stash of sock yarn. And so, um, yeah, I just want to tell you a little bit about this book. I've, I've flipped through it just for maybe 10 minutes um, because I really wanted to get on the podcasting before Owen gets home from school. But so she has different skill levels in this book and Let's see, there are, there's 25, I want to say there's 25 patterns in here. And 
most of them are geared toward the adventurous beginner slash intermediate knitter. So she's got four skill levels. There are beginner, which there's only two patterns for the beginner. And then there's, um, there's like nine patterns for the adventurous beginner, 13 for intermediate, and then there's one advanced pattern in here. So this is a great book for most of us. Um, because I would say the adventurous beginner category is a pretty substantial section of the book, as is intermediate. Um, so I would like to, I mean, just look at this first picture in the book. I'm not going to show you guys too much, but I thought I could show off some pictures of different things. Um, you know, she, she gives in the beginning of the book, she does the typical, like, how to measure your gauge and all of that. Um, so, so the first pattern is the cover photo there. And then there is, I'll hold it off to the side so that we're just getting the, the pictures. So there's another mitten. So there's several um, patterns for mittens, which are really cute. Um, this is another one. Look at how fun that one is. And so these just give you just different ideas. Here's the, those same mittens from a different angle. And you should be able to see most of these on Instagram in the book. There's um, a pair of fingerless mitts in here as well. Um, look at these are really cool. It's like a different construction for that part of the mitten there, which is really cool. So I actually, I think all of the mitten patterns are super fun. I would make I would make every single mitten pattern for sure. Um, the only patterns that I was not crazy about in this book were the hats. Actually, this right here is the one hat that I could see myself knitting. And it has everything to do just with the style. Maybe this one. I mean, maybe this one too. Um, but then there's a couple in here that I just that they're just not my style at all. Um, like, like this one's just not my style at all. I just wouldn't wear a bonnet style hat. That's, it's just not something that I could see myself doing. Maybe I would make it for a really young kid, like a baby, but I couldn't even picture. And here's like another, another view of it on an adult. That's just not for me. So that's kind of the only part of it that I'm not excited about, but it's such a small section of the book. I would totally knit that. That's a different view of that first one I showed you. Um, but the other patterns in here, there is a huge cowl and shawl section. So there's that one. There's that cowl so I'm just trying to do a little flip through so that you guys you guys all need to get this book if you like fun sock striping self-striping sock yarn then I just I think that you should get this book because there are so many ideas of some really colorful accessories but it is not only, all right, so now we're into shawls. It's not just the accessories that are so exciting about this book. There are actually a few garments, like sweaters in here, that is actually what got me the most excited because you guys know I'm a sweater knitter. Um, so I'm just like showing you just really quick some of the different pattern. And this one is really interesting too. This one's like a, almost like a pinwheel and shawl and then it comes out. It's just really interesting. I don't know if I would make that one, but it's just really cool. I think this is my favorite of the shawl patterns. I think that one's my favorite. So, I mean, the only thing with some of these larger garments, the only thing I will say is that a lot of the larger garments, you can't just use a random skein of your self-striping sock yarn because you, you need more than one. So, so a lot of the smaller projects, you can just grab something from your stash. But I, I do think that the larger garments, I mean, 
when I buy sock yarn, I don't usually buy more than one skein of the same color. I just don't. So it would take, I think, a little bit of planning to, to make one of the larger projects. Um, so like, for example, this is a pattern that has been out on its own for quite a while. This is the sock arms pattern, right? And so you can see, I mean, that is like a whole skein. Like you're not gonna be able to get two sleeves of that length with just one skein of sock yarn, right? So, you know, you would have to, to really plan it out and make sure that um, you find whatever colorway you want and then buy two. Um, and I have not looked to find um, requirements of yarn, yardage requirements for these garments. Um, I have just, but you know, there's, they're written for little kids too. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just using my eyes and eyeballing and just from my experience, I can say, I can easily say that some of these definitely require more than a single skein. So that would be the only, and look how cute this is. My goodness, that is the cutest little thing. It's so cute. I'm still waiting to get to the there's like two garments in here that I definitely would want to make. All right, so one of them is the Bright Axis T. I'm sure you guys have seen this one on Instagram because I've seen people post this. And I think that that is so clever. The top of it is actually the same type of construction that I used when I did Owen's Christmas sweater with the horizontal, the vertical stripes knit horizontally with a neck opening. Um, so I think that uh, I would have to see, but it looks like you could get away with a single skein for that, I think. Um, and then you just would need to find a coordinating color for the body. So that is on my list to knit. And there is the other one that is on my list too is called Drop a Rainbow Pullover. And that one is this one. So it's a little bit similar to sock arms, except it's like a t-shirt style and then the sleeves don't start all the way up at the shoulder like the other one. And then I don't know if you guys can see that, hold it up close there. There's a little fun swirly detail with the way the stitches are done on the sleeve there. And that looks really cool. So out of the garments, those are the two that I am most interested in knitting. Um, and then there's, I think this is the last, yeah, the last pattern in the book is, is this one, which is more of like a color work yoke design there with like that little, um, I think it's called the lice stitch, the little flea stitch there from the Norwegian patterns. So yeah, so that is this book. I mean, rainbows make me happy. Self-striping sock yarn makes me happy. I just can't imagine knitting these wouldn't also make me happy. So I, yeah, the reason I really wanted to pick up this book was because I know for a lot of the smaller projects, I can just dip into my stash because I have more sock yarn than I am going to be able to knit. Maybe not in my entire life, but I mean, if I didn't buy any more, but that's not going to happen. I'm just, yeah. So, so this I think would be, is going to come in really handy as I participate in my own stop, drop and knit your stash along thread. And then there's a couple of those bigger projects. I think I do have two, a duplicate of, of one colorway, at least of Julia's. So I think I might try to turn those two skeins into one of those garments with the sleeves. So I'm not sure, but here we go again. I have an episode where I didn't think that I had that much content to share with you guys since I was only working on my test knit all week. And here I am going over an hour talking again. I, I don't know what it is. So, <laughs> Thank you guys so much again for subscribing. Remember, if you wanna enter the giveaway, you must be subscribed. So go ahead and do that now. 
like the video, leave me a comment on this video to enter the giveaway because I will be picking from the comments. So if you do not leave a comment, you will not be entered into the giveaway, okay? Um, give me a thumbs up because then that helps more people find it on YouTube, I think, is the way the algorithm works, is that just the more likes a video has, the more people are likely to happen upon it because YouTube will recommend it. So I think that's it. So thank you guys so much. Have an amazing weekend. Have an amazing week. Have an amazing everything. And I will see you again soon. Bye.